Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roman Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be creating a simple splash screen for your Flutter apps. In this series, I'll be building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. I'll be covering common layout techniques, customizing the look and feel of existing widgets, and creating your own widgets in a simple way. The app we'll be building will have a splash screen, an onboarding component, a welcome login page, a main list page, a selected category page, a category details page, and a simulated map page. We'll start by building the splash screen. Flutter lends itself for this type of rapid prototyping and development due to its declarative UI style of development. We'll see more of that in a minute. In a brand new project using Flutter Create, I'll start working on the splash page widget. I'll use the material app as the foundation widget for this app, and we'll create a stateless widget called splash page. A widget can be stateful or stateless. If a widget can change when a user interacts with it, for example, it is stateful. This widget will only display a background color with the app logo in the center. After creating my stateless widget called splash page, I'll overwrite the build method and return a scaffold widget or any other component that provides the material theme. As the body of the scaffold widget, I'll add a container widget with a background color and as its corresponding child, a center widget with an icon widget inside. Add the splash page widget as the home of your material app to see it show. You can avoid adding an additional widget by replacing the center widget and adding alignment center to the container widget. But I'd like to use my own icons whenever possible, as opposed to the ones provided by the material library. You can create your own icon fonts and import them into your project. I use a service called Fontastic. I create SVGs out of my design, import my SVG icons into Fontastic, generate an icon font as a TTF file, import it into my project in the assets slash fonts folder, modify the pop spec YAML to reference this newly added font. The benefits of using a custom icon font in your Flutter applications for all your icon needs as opposed to multiple images are humongous. Vector-based, sharp-looking, small file size, I can go on. Back in the project, I'll create a small custom widget called Icon Font, which will use a text widget internally in order to display my icon fonts. On the text widget, use color, font size, and font family to specify my custom icon font name. Let's try this real quick. Replace the icon widget by my custom icon font widget in the splash page widget. Sweet. Let's make this custom icon font widget a little bit more reusable so I can use it throughout my app moving forward. Let's add three properties, color, size, and icon name. Let's add a constructor that populates these properties. Replace the hard-coded values for the internal properties just defined. Back in the splash page, let's add the required parameters to show my custom icon font. Now this icon font widget is a reusable widget I can use moving forward, so I'll eventually move it into a widgets folder. Each of the icons in this icon font is mapped to a letter. So I'll create a helper class called Icon Font Helper and map each letter to a name. Back in the splash page widget, in the Icon Font widget, replace the hard-coded character by the corresponding helper constant. Make sure to import it. Now we are using a more descriptive name as opposed to just a character. Now I want to make the splash page widget a lot more reusable as well by making it last for a predefined number of seconds and the page where we should navigate to afterwards. So let's improve on it. In the splash page widget, let's create a constructor that takes two parameters, the duration in seconds of how long it will show for 
and a widget called Go to Page, which will hold a reference to the next page to navigate to after the number of seconds have elapsed. Let's create a quick welcome page, which will only have a text widget inside a container widget with an alignment center inside a scaffold as well. We'll get to this page in more detail in a subsequent video. We'll use it as a test just to navigate from our newly refactored splash page widget. For adding the delay, we'll use a future.delayed, passing the duration provided, and inside we use the navigator.push to push the next page into the stack, passing the context and using the material page route to navigate to the desired page. Let's not forget to hide the debug sash from the top right corner of the screen. With my splash page widget refactored, I'll pass a duration and the widget page where it will go to after the duration. Let's do a full reload. And with that, we have a simple splash screen with a configurable duration and that knows where to navigate next. In the next video, we'll tackle the welcome page widget and discuss other types of widgets as well as other techniques. Thanks for watching. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated, and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.